Is it fun? Okay, guys, so you guys have requested that we do a session on DFIP. Um, I thought it was best if we can just go through a step-by-step -step approach of just getting to familiarize yourself with the device first and just to see how we can use that, okay? Um, so I think at first glance, it's important first to understand that before you do any OSCE, preparation is key, okay? So you have to make sure that you prepare your equipment. And how you will see it basically, yes, it's no different from any hospital setting where things that needs to be on charge will be placed on charge so that in the event when you need to use it, it will be uh, ready to use, okay? So, so you don't want to get to a point where you need to use this device and the battery is flat, okay? Especially now with the high incidence of ESCOM and load shedding. Uh, that's why these devices come with a battery as well whereby in, in order for those cases where there's no uh, electric, electricity available, and then at least it can operate on its, on its batteries. So, you will see that there's various um, defibrillators on the market, um, different types. I'm very familiar with the Zoll range. Um, the Zoll was there for the robustness, and you can use it, the portability, and th they are starting to look at how to make it less heavy by still getting all the equipment and stuff and all the necessary things on it. Um, I see what's basically been used in the hospital setting is basically the, the neon uh, cordon, and this is the cardio life. So this is basically familiarize yourself with what you will use. So this might not be the same as what you will see in your hospital rounds, but the principle remains the same. So it's important for you to familiarize yourself with the equipment as each of them will come with a user manual, okay? That user manual will contain a lot of important information. Some of them would then be just to how to operate the machine normally, how to um, store the machine, uh, what is the default settings on it. Those are important things for you to know when you are faced with a situation where you have to use that now in a real life situation, okay? So at first glance, what you guys can see is that this machine has various modes, okay? So it, it can do more than just defibrillate, okay? You can use it as a monitor. So if you just want to monitor the patient um, with standard vital signs, um, you will obviously put it on monitor. Yeah, you can use it as an AED. So it has an AED capability on it, which means that in the event when you want to use this, um, it can be used by lay persons as well. And then it's obviously the manual defibrillator part where you need to be a little bit more advanced in order to use it, because man, you, you're going to decide whether something is shockable. When you put it on an AED, the AED decides what is shockable or not. Is that clear? Good. So, you will see with the previous uh, um, OSCEs, some of the guys that was, was here, I basically went down, and as I was doing the compressions, I would say one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah? I'm not sure who can remember that, who, the guys that was there. And you would look at me like, hi, how are you doing compressions? So it's one, two, three, one, two, three. What I was trying to guide to you is to say that it's one, two, three. <laughs> one, two, three, okay? So this basically means it's foolproof, okay? You follow the steps, one, two, three. <laughs> and that will be much easier for you then to operate the machine. Okay, so let's say we, op we just switch on the machine. You will see it's now on monitor mode. And you will see that there's actually some things, like alarm settings. So, so you can set the alarms um, when you're monitoring a patient, okay? And then it will go off once it actually exceeds those settings or uh, whatever you guys have set, okay? Um, you will see that the leads, the lead part is as soon as you switch on the monitor, the default setting is pedals, which means this is pedals. So if I take over the pedals and I do this, you will think you see something there. So the person is on VF, because usually what happens is when you come in, you'll be like, yeah. okay, so you're creating VF here, but it's not VF, okay? It's just the fact that you are interfering with that, because it's on pedals, okay? That's the first thing to note. Should you wish, now let's say it's in monitor mode, and you want to switch it in between the other devices, um, what we usually do is we will then press on lead, that will be lead one, but because no leads are attached to the patient, it's not gonna give you any rhythm. But the normal, uh, for normal monitoring purposes, we will always have our ECG on lead two. Okay, for this, it's not applicable because we want to go over to the 
deeper part. That's why we're all here. Okay? So I'm busy building up your, <laughs> your emotions until we get to what we need to do. Okay, so on the machine itself, let's say we put it now on. Okay, 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 relax, relax. Okay, so let's say I put it on 10, for example, for 10 joules. And I want to make sure, okay, the dose that I'm going to give is going to be 10 joules. Okay, and now I charge my machine. Okay, first of all, if you listen to that, what does that mean? It's charging. It's charging. When is it fully charged? Now. That's important, guys. Okay, that's important. So that's a built in setting to tell you, listen here, dude, you've press charged. Okay, I need to discharge whatever is built up here. Okay, it's similar like you, once you get closer to, to the exams, build up emotions, you need to discharge. Okay, so you will hear this sound happening inside of you. Okay, cool. But the machine has a, in, an inbuilt default, which means after 40 seconds, it disarms. Okay, so you don't have to be too worried about discharging it. Let's say you've made a mistake and you've assessed and you've actually found out the patient actually has a pulse. But now you've already pressed charge. That shouldn't be a reason for you now to discharge because it's already charged. Okay? It means that you can leave it there or alternatively, let's say it's on charge. You hear again? So now it's fully charged. Once it's there and you want to disarm it, it means you literally have to go down and press it on disarm. So there's something called disarm there. <laughs> That's the mode. So now you disarm the charge. Other modes and other ECGs will have the ability where you can just press select again and it will automatically disarm. Okay? Okay, so this one you literally have to go back and go back to disarm. And you disarm it like that. Or you can wait for 40 seconds where the machine will disarm automatically. Okay, cool. So, you will also see that we are also guided by in terms of joules. Né? Remember what Dr. Carl said. Um, there's a difference between monophasic and biphasic machines, okay? Can somebody tell me the difference? Yes, it's spelled differently. Uh -huh. Just, what is the difference? The, 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 the joules, okay, but why is there a difference in joules? Okay, so it, it has to do with the waveforms, okay? Um, and vectors, okay? So both of these, once you press it, so on a, bi, on a monophasic, it's only one current that will go through the arc. Okay, so you have a giver, receiver. That's why you press both of them together, and it's done. So now you need higher voltages and higher joules in order to get the same effect. Okay, by doing that, it's higher risk of causing adverse effects. Okay, with, with obvious effects, okay? So if you have a biphasic, it means essentially that both of them are givers and receivers. So you're essentially giving two shocks, okay? And that's why you give it at lower joules and lower voltage. Does it make sense? So it's highly effective. Okay, so that's essentially what it is. But you guys can go read a little bit more in terms of the differences and exactly how this works. Okay, cool. So the default, we've done it. We've done the, the one, two, three, and now we're going to go physically over to just handling our default. Now, based on what you guys were taught, there's obviously some changes and stuff that I would like to bring in, but I'm not gonna do it now because I'm gonna confuse you. I'm gonna do it exactly as how you were taught. But there is ways to make it quicker and to make it more effective, okay? But for the purpose of what we're doing now and not to cause any confusion, what you guys were taught is acceptable for now. Good, okay, so you would normally then obviously come to your patient and we're talking about the whole approach now. Because now, is there anything that's unclear about the defib for now? Okay, so obviously you guys are gonna see how we're gonna discharge and obviously looking at where you're gonna place. The placement of your pedals is important. Also the handling of it is important. But those are things that I will just re-emphasize as I'm performing the skill. So at first glance, you will have your universal and observe universal precautions, which means that you will have your gloves on you will have your mask on, everything that's required based on the previous lessons you guys were doing to do a risk assessment, okay? So it's a risk assessment, 
you've been called, the patient is collapsed, unresponsive, um, please doctor, come and help. Okay? So, the first thing would then be just to assess the scene for any hazards. Okay? There's no hazards. As you approach the patient, you will then obviously, what do you do? What is that? It's hazards? Hello. Hello. Okay? So it's hello. Because you need to be intentional. Hello, man. Okay? No response. And then it's help. What does the first help mean? Come closer. Just, just get somebody's attention to come closer because I might need assistance. Okay? While you are now coming closest in the process, what am I doing? I'm exposing the patient. Okay? And now I'm feeling for a carotid pulse and I'm looking to see if there's breathing simultaneously for 5 to 10 seconds. Once I've confirmed that there's no pulse and there's no breathing or there's abnormal breathing, what do I do now? Now, whoever I indicated to come closer is now here. So, the only difference now with the normal approach to CPR versus this approach now is, I don't have to tell you, go get the defibrillator, because it's here. <laughs> so, that's the only difference. So, now it's like, okay, fancy way, I would have said, we get a defibrillator, and I will immediately start CPR, starting with chest compressions. Now, the defibrillator is here, okay, and according to the guidelines, we should defib as soon as the defibrillator is available. Okay, so in that case, I will then say, you, ma'am, please start CPR, okay, starting with chest compressions. Does it make sense? <laughs> okay, so, she, she, while she's doing it, okay, so you can just hold your, your hands on the chest. So while she's now getting ready to do chest, or while she's busy doing chest compressions, what I'm doing now is, I'm now going to my defibrillator. Okay, so how you were taught was initially, you will first switch it on monitor because you want to first analyze whether or not the patient is in a, having a shockable rhythm. Okay, so the patient is in cardiac arrest, you've confirmed it, but you want to see whether or not it's a shockable rhythm or not. Is it, is it clear? Yeah. Good. So now you use your panels, okay, first just to analyze. So the placement is important. Now while she's doing that, just do your chest. What I will do then is, I will just connect and see. Okay, what do I see there? And on the machine, I've confirmed. So you're doing your compressions. And now I'm like, okay, just stop quickly. As yes, you stop, I'm analyzing. Confirmed, it's a ventricular fibrillation. Okay, now I go back. Okay, I then ask you to resume chest compressions. Now I go back and I put my gel on my pedals. After I put my gel on the pedals, she's still continuing at this stage, right? Now I'm going and I'm setting my machine. Now this is a biphasic machine. So we're also guided by guidelines, universal guidelines. But when it comes to using the machine, the manufacturer will guide you. What is the least and what is the safest option? So whereas, even if the guidelines are saying, oh, okay, fine, 200 joules, according to the manufacturer here, it's safe, it says you must start off with 150 joules. So according to manufacturer specifications. Okay? Remember, you're going to use a staggering approach. So it's going to end up to 200 joules in any case. Okay. So now you're continuing that. What I'm doing now is, all I'm doing is, I'm just doing a quick wrap with the gel. Why? Just to spread it evenly. Okay? 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 What am I doing? Is it wrong? Is it wrong? It doesn't feel right. Yes! <laughs> Guys, I'm getting way to feedback. Sorry, doctor, you're not supposed to uh, ask him. Okay? Because why? Because the thing is, we have this thing of Grey's anatomy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You don't do that. Okay? You don't do it. So, there's gel evenly spread. Okay? Gel is on. Okay, cool. It's set, and now I go over to my patient. So as I put it, it must be exactly. Now notice that I haven't done anything in terms of charging. Okay? It's moved directly from there to my patient. 
Is it clear? Okay? So now as you're continuing, you're still continuing with that. Now I'm charging, but I'm pressing charging on my pedals. Okay? So it's now charging, you are compressing, now I'm saying one, I am clear. So I'm first clearing myself, two, you are clear. So she's stepping back. Three, everyone's clear. Now with firm pressure, I move forward and I just deliver the shock. Shock delivered. From there I move see, immediately back to my defibrillator and I ask her, continue with chest compressions. Immediately. So I'm not looking at my screen. Okay? Just to confuse. Okay? And there's your defib skill. That is another long version of am I scanning for you? Okay? And he has it short and sweet to get the sin done. Okay, good. Um, will you then give me feedback then? So, any hazards? Seen safe, whatever the case. Okay, ready? Okay, cool. Okay, so I've been called. Patient is in cardiac arrest. I'm here to perform the defib skill. Okay, scanning the environment for any hazards? Yeah, no hazards. No hazards? Hello. Patient is under Help! He calls for help, see? Okay, so now I've confirmed, no pulse, no breathing. Please start chest compressions. Help me get a CPR backboard in here. Okay, CPR backboard is in. Now she's busy and she's resuming comp chest compressions. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay, stop for analyzing. Just move quickly. So I'm analyzing. I'm seeing the patient is in a ventricular fibrillation. It's a shockable rhythm. Continue with chest compressions. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Right, stop. 20, 21. One, I'm clear. Two, you are clear. Three, everybody's clear. Shocking. Shock delivered. Continue chest compressions. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay, seven, stop. eight. So it took us less than 30 seconds, what, 40 seconds. Okay. So essentially, um, the board and things is very important, um, but because I've left it out was, you guys were not taught to include that part. Okay? So I don't want to create confusion. So that is important. Just keep in mind what we said about the flat surface at the bottom, and then you, that's basically that. Okay?